Railroad is um, it's not a it's not a job, it's a lifestyle, but outside of railroading, what are the things that you like to enjoy? Because you spend so much time here, it's just anything, any hobby you can you can jump into. For me it's cars and um, just spending spending time with family and stuff like that because you gotta being out here so much you gotta kinda cherish those that time you're you're gonna have your free time. Now, now, now explain your 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 rural um, connection and stuff. Like you have your um, your father worked for Penn Central, right? Mm -hmm. Then you also had a brother work for NS, also, right? Uh, actually, Conroe. Oh. He hired on Conroe. Conroe. Uh, then transferred to, uh, to NS, and uh, currently, I believe he is with a short line down south. Okay. So. Are we missing any anything else in the family puzzle? Well, my. Father-in-law or my future father-in-law, he he works for he worked for Conrail NS, transferred back to Conrail. So, so it's pretty much been a railroad family from uh, from day one. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's good to see the um the fa is a, a family thing and um not a lot of uh, family does it. Mm -hmm. It's great to uh, see that though. Yeah, that seems to be, well. I always have been the um I feel like especially back then was the. The way to get in on the railroad was through family, friends, friends of friends, friends of family, things like that. Um, so that that seemed to have always been the, the kind of sort of trend, especially back then. It's not the case as much anymore. How you doing today? Not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So explain the, what happened yesterday during the events at Abrams. Um, well, at the, at the time we were typing up an email when uh, the yard crew was out uh, shifting out some cars. Um, me, I had a trainee with me yesterday and we we heard a, uh, a pretty loud thump that wasn't normal for uh, slack action going on with the cars. And uh, preceded by a constant thumping noise, we turned around, looked out the window and happened to see that the wheels have uh, came off the rail and the wheels were riding alongside the end, tie end plates. Um, by that time, we jumped on the radio to get the crew to stop. Um, by that time, um, getting a train to that size stopped, it uh, took about a car and a half, about 100, maybe 150 feet, give or take, to stop. At that point, uh, the car had uh, got binded up with a couple of switches coming up and bounced up. Probably a good five, maybe six feet in the air and had uh, uncoupled itself and bounced over and and then uh, proceeded to uh, dump the train, so. Well, wow, that seems like a lot that goes on um, happening there, but um, did the, the ground shake? Did the building rumble when the car was uh, right on top of the uh, plates? It did a little bit. So we did know, we we definitely um, felt it. It was, it was more of a, a, a dull thud that was kind of echoing through the building a little bit as it was hitting each tie plate running through. And then the last, finally when it bounced up and bounced down, it was, uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to describe that sound. It was a real, like, it was a pretty, pretty good bang when it finally came to a halt. Now, as you see this uh, happening, like, how did you felt? Um, the, the basic thing was just to get everything, everybody stopped. And the first knee-jerk reaction was to get on the radio to make sure everybody was out of the way. Uh, we had a train running on a, a track adjacent from it, so I didn't want that to hit anything or cause any more damage than it already had done. So luckily we got it stopped in time. The train wasn't going very fast, it was only going a couple mile an hour, so it wasn't doing anything crazy. So When stuff happened like this in the yard, how that affects operations? Um, it pretty much brings everything to a screeching halt. Uh, unfortunately, we get uh, we get stuck because, uh, especially in that case, because that car was on the main lead side, which doesn't allow us to uh, really make any any more movements in the yard. So we had to stop until that car got fixed and re-railed. Now, how long would you say that delay took us to uh, that hindered the operations at Abrams Yard? Um, it varied just because, uh, why well, once the crew, it took, I think the cranes and everything here to get it re-railed and the car to uh, a state to be moved. 
probably took them about three, maybe four hours to, uh, to get here. Once they were here, it only took them maybe 45 minutes to get the car up uh, and, and to a point where we could actually roll it to get it out of the way. Now, uh, what is the procedure of that? You hear a thumb, string, when emergency, uh, it was a mess. What's the first thing you do to, uh, to remedy the situation? Um, first thing would probably, uh, well, in this case, was to call the train master who was on site. He just happened to be at the west end of the yard at the moment bring, to get him back. Um, essentially, just see where everybody's at and then kind of just figure out what moves we need to make to get things cleared up. We called M and W, our maintenance away department. We called our car department. So we we had uh, those three on site to assess the situation, assess the car's damage, assess the track damage. And um, once they figured out exactly what caused it or what potentially it caused the accident, then they will, uh, you know, fix the problem and and then we could resume operations. Okay. Now, uh, since it happened uh, the night before, did this stuff have any effects on operation on today? No, actually, we uh, we were able to call some uh, extra crews out to pretty much finish up the work that was left behind. And that kind of uh, balanced things out. I guess in, in some cases, some of the customers' cars, especially the one that derailed, that won't get delivered till that car gets repaired. But other than that, it, it, it didn't really affect too much of, of operation, at least for today. You remind me, how long have you been with the railroad? Uh, going on my 14th year. Wow, 14 years, congratulations, 14 years. Now, um, being at the yard and the being in position, how many derailments did you see that Abrams Yard had? <sighs> um, off the top of my head, I mean, it's definitely been, uh, definitely been 10, 10 plus, I would, I would say. I mean, they're, they're caused by so many different factors that can be caused by human error. They can be caused by uh, natural causes, uh, being from the, the weather changes, track conditions, things of that nature. So, okay. Out of the 14 years, what was the worst one you can remember? Um, the worst one I can remember, probably... Probably one, one where the uh, engines had derailed and it cracked the um, traction motor, the the uh, apparently the bottom case of the traction motor, which was leaking, and that was uh, that was pretty substantial damage. Uh, so those engines pretty much had to be uh, sealed up, and then they were set up to be rollers to get down to the shop to be repaired. So that one was uh, that was a pretty good one, but. Uh, the rest, the rest seem, were, were similar to what was yesterday. Not, uh, they weren't overly bad. Something went off the rail, but nothing, not enough to really damage anything too substantial. Oh. Um, but we did have the, actually, no, you know, we had those two uh, tank cars, those dangerous tank cars that got derailed here not that long. Uh, that was what, five years ago, I believe? Five, maybe six years ago? Mm, they yeah. were, that was pretty good. That was, the news was here and stuff for that. Just for the, Hazardous material sakes, like that was uh, pretty pretty good. Oh yeah, I think I have photos of that right there. I should be showing them soon. Yeah, that one was that was a pretty uh, substantial derailment. Yeah, as far as gnarly. just the that's a gnarly one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, damage wise, it wasn't that bad, but just because of what could have possibly happened, that was a pretty bad one. As a yard master, what does the day to day uh, work work look like for you? Um, I mean, from side of time, just essentially. Um, Getting, uh, getting all the crew's paperwork together, dealing with uh, OSS, which is uh, operations uh, and services to um, find out what customers need, what cars and, and where. Um, and essentially I'm kind of the bridge between the train masters and the crews a little bit. Um, and essentially making up their work for the, for the entire day and, and keeping essentially just figuring out where everybody's at in the yard and uh, orchestrating where everybody's at, at at one particular time. You got to make sure that these, this big heavy equipment is clean and clear of anybody else and nobody's working on the same tracks, things like that.
Pretty much, you are the man that controls everything that goes in and out of uh, Abrams, that's essentially because you are the yard master, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, so none don't move until you say so, because you the boss thing, right? That is, in that <laughs> case, that is correct. That is my sandbox. Yeah, that is your sandbox, and you the king. That's it. Mm, okay. <laughs> I grew no, up well, working out here a little bit, and it was uh, something that um, uh, just kind of kept me going, like working with uh, you and the other other guys. You, you know, we kind of formed like a little bit of a brotherhood, so to speak. Um, and that kind of keeps keeps you coming back. I mean, you know, the comp it's kind of like us versus the company, in, in some respects, not in a bad way necessarily, but we kind of band together to make things work out. No matter how hard they make some of the jobs or assignments be, we come out and figure out how to make them better. 14 years ago, what made you decide to work for the railroad? Like, like why the railroad? Um, for me, well, at the, at the time I hired when I was 19. So I didn't really know exactly what career path I wanted. Uh, at that time I did a year of college. Wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. My dad actually worked for Penn Central back in the 70s and had uh, suggested, hey, why don't you, you know, check out the railroad for now see if you like it at least this way you can start a career path and kind of go from there um especially since it, it is something that doesn't require deg a degree um and it, and it just it worked out 14 years later you know still here <laughs> cool now you know it's the right now the different uh times you know some places are hiring some places are not but the places that are hiring and somebody wants to uh work for the railroad what kind of advice could you give to that person that's starting out looking that wants to uh they get in it because they think that or they ha or they want to make it their career what would you say to that person um really just understand what they're getting into i had a very clear-cut idea of what i was getting into it wasn't something that was sugar-coated or anything so i knew that there was going to be some long days long nights um in some cases um other yards are unique, but in some cases you may have to stay in a hotel overnight because you're taking a train a very long distance uh, and then you'll return trip back on a train. So just understanding that and preparing your family for that. And if you're OK with all that at that point, that would be where I would say, then go ahead and take that step forward for that. Now, from your position, where did you start at? I uh, started out as a uh, conductor. Okay, then you worked your way up to a... a uh, remote uh, control engineer, then an engineer, and then a yard master. Okay. Now, can somebody automatically get in the game and be a yard master, or they work their way up? No, they can. They can. Um, uh, you, you can very well get hired as a conductor. If there is a position open available as a yard master, you can slide into that, that spot. You do have to be chosen or the train master has to essentially rehire you for that position. So you have to be, uh, they have to be confident enough you to house that position, so. And what makes that one uh, qualified to even hold that position? Because there's a lot of responsibilities to keep everybody in the clear and, move, and things moving and be the middleman from dispatcher, train master, CYO, and, um, and crews. I think basically uh, being being qualified, hey, just, hey Mike. Just being qualified on the uh, the territory, being qualified in the yard, um, and having somewhat of a man manager experience, uh, so to speak. And I think more than anything, which isn't really a, a qualifying like quality that you you should have, but I think having a good relationship with the guys is, makes you know all the sense in the world. Because if you don't have that, they're not going to work for you. You know. If uh, pretty sure if I asked these guys I need needed a favor, they would most most would go ahead and do that with, without a second thought. But because you, know, you also got to be the man that laid it down. Like, look, I need you to do what to do, right? Even though they yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, about it, I'm but. always willing to work with somebody, but at some point there is uh, there is times when it's like, hey, listen, like we're in a bad we're in a bad spot. This needs to happen. This needs to get done. Um, and there's nothing we can do. We just plug away and do the best we can. Now I know railroad is um is not a it's not a job, it's a lifestyle, but outside of railroading, what are things that you like to enjoy? Because you spend so much time here, it's just 
anything, any hobby you can, you can jump into. For me, it's cars and um, just spending, spending time with family and stuff like that, because you got to being out here so much, you got to kind of cherish those, that time you're, you're going to have your free time. Now, now, now explain your, your, your rural um, connection and stuff. Like you have your, um, your father worked for Penn Central, right? Mm -hmm. Then you also had a brother work for NS also, right? Uh, actually, Conroe. Oh. He hired on Conroe. Conroe. Uh, then transferred to, uh, to NS. And uh, currently, I believe he is with a short line down south. Okay. So. Are we missing any, anything else in the family puzzle? Well, my father-in-law or my future father-in-law, he, he, he worked for Conroe, NS, transferred back to Conroe. So, so it's pretty much been a railroad family from uh, from day one. Oh, that's pretty cool. That yeah, it's, it's good to see the um the fa is a, a family thing and um not a lot of uh, family does it. But mm -hmm. it's great to uh, see that though. Yeah, that seems to be, well. I always have been the um, I feel like especially back then was the the way to get in on the railroad was through family, friends, friends of friends, friends of family, things like that. Um, so that, that seemed to have always been the, the kind of sort of trend, especially back then. It's not the case as much anymore.